Hi gorgeous, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ara, I am a 39 year old mother of five, beauty and fitness lover, and today I've got an, an, a very exciting video for you. I picked up Tom Ford's new Architecture Soft Matte Blurring Powder and the new Rabon Foundation. I've been stalking Ulta for the new Rabon foundation and the second that this bad boy launched or rather was available on Ulta, I picked this one up immediately. I bought this in the shade 10C. Yes, 10C. This foundation is 30 ml, 40 gram, 30 ml, one ounce of product, not one gram, one ounce of product it is $40. And this is the new Tom Ford Architecture Soft Matte Blurring Powder. I don't have the original powder, but when I tell you that I was caught off guard with this launch, didn't hear anything about it, and then just one day, all of the people that I follow on social media for my news information, well, beauty news information, mentioned this was available. I was like, okay, well, I love my Tom Ford Architecture Soft Matte Foundation, so yes, I had to buy this one. $95 in the hole. 95, $95 in the hole for nine grams of product and it swept me off my feet. So that's what we're gonna be playing with today. Don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoy it in any way whatsoever because the content is meant to be enjoyable. So hopefully it is enjoyable. And if it's, if it's not enjoyable, I'm sorry. If you are not subscribed, don't forget to subscribe before you go because that way you can be up to date with everything that I'm up to date. And before we get started on this foundation, I just wanna let you know that I do have fine lines. I don't have a lot of texture on my skin. I do have some texture, not a whole lot. I take relatively good care of my skin, use a lot of sunscreen when I'm outside, but my fine lines are there. You can definitely see those forehead frowns. I do have a little bit of skin concerns, some age spots. Some of the most important things I look for in a foundation is longevity. I like a more satin finish, medium to full buildable coverage. This is not that, this is light to medium buildable coverage. And then I prefer that my foundations do not have scents. Many of the luxury foundations cannot help themselves. They have to have scents in them. This has a slight fragrance to it. If you are sensitive to fragrance in any way, shape or form, this might bother you. So I have here the new Rabon Fresh Touch Foundation. I got mine off of Ulta. This thing is $40. You get one ounce, 30 mLs. There are 30 shades available. I did use the Find Your Shade Match. It kind of gave me multiple different shades to choose from. I went ahead and bought 10C, which is fair with a cool undertone. I debated heavily between 00C and 10C. Swatches on the models were really difficult. The higher the number, some of them look slightly more fair versus the one prior. And then on top of it, with the shade match not being easy to choose from either, I really didn't know what I was kind of going into. 10C, when I swatched it after arrival, seemed just a touch too dark. It is one of the squeezy tubes. It's really cute. If you have the Estee Lauder, I can't remember the name of that one. I think that's the Futurist Hydra skin. It's very similar to that. This is actually just ever so slightly too deep, but I did pull out the Fenty Beauty. I love this bad boy, the Soft Lit Foundation. I'm gonna compare it to this. Shade match wise, they look very similar in the container, but I am gonna read off the back of the box here. It says it's made with 91% ingredients of natural origin, which whatever. Vegan formula, it doesn't have the Leaping Bunny certification on it, so I'm not sure about the cruelty free aspect. Enriched with avocado oil, made in Italy. 12 hour lasting a glow finish, lightweight, fresh texture, buildable coverage, light to medium. We shall see. I'm gonna use a clean Sigma foundation brush for this. I've already squeezed out just a little bit when I did the actual swatching on my arm after I bought it. So it took me a minute to get the product to come up into the tube. There's an interesting soft floral fragrance. It's like a fresh floral. I'm using the Milk Makeup Cloud Glow Primer. I haven't used it in a little bit and I wanna get through this. I don't have too much left in it and I've already done some color correcting with my Charlotte Tilbury.
I used two pumps of this. Honestly, I probably should have only used the one because it is definitely a lot more than I thought it was going to be. It's got a soft floral scent to it, which just, it's kind of getting to me. I'm not really a fan of it. It's not super overwhelming like the Guerlain, but it's still a little too much. It's looking like a subtle glow, like a subtle dewy texture. I do think it has a pretty finish so far. It also looks a little more lum like matte, not luminous, but soft luminous matte. I don't know how to describe it. It's not super luminous, but it's not super matte either. I guess a little more natural skin finish is what I'm looking for. This actually dried down a lot quicker than I thought it would. It was drying down as I was blending it out, which is interesting to me. And I'm just gonna use my little Sephora sponge here and pick up any of the excess because I definitely think I used just a little too much, but that's okay. Well, I don't think I need to build it up. I think with the two squeezes, I got a very beautiful light medium finish light medium medium finish. It's very healthy looking. It doesn't look odd on my skin. It still has a very subtle yellow undertone to it that I can see. So it doesn't feel or look rather like a true cool undertone. More on the side of neutral, which is okay. I don't mind it too much. It's not as radiant as I was thinking it would be. At least with the description, I was assuming it'd be a little more like the Fenty Beauty. I'm gonna do a little bit of a swatch test here. This is the Rabon right here. Let's see if I can blend it out just a little bit better. And this is the Fenty Beauty. So the Fenty Beauty shade is a better match for me. I can't remember what shade I got it in actually, 120. And then this is 10C for Rabon, so still just a little too deep. They have a very similar luminous dewy finish though. I just feel like the Rabanne dries down a little bit quicker and is not as luminous as the Fenty Beauty. I have here the new Tom Ford Architecture Soft Matte Finishing Powder. I don't have the original one. That one was discontinued sometime earlier this year if I recall correctly. This is the new one that just kind of silently launched. I didn't see anything about it on Emit Beauty Talk. I usually get most of my beauty updates from her Instagram channel, which I'll have linked down below. This is described as a lightweight formula with a soft matte finish that helps control shine. It is $95 for nine grams of product. It's a 12 month shelf life. The description goes as sublime softness, a cloud-like veil, the ultra sensorial formula, comfort skin while spherical powders help control shine. Good grief, that was some words. <laughs> Those were words. This super fine translucent powder blurs the look of imperfections with a filter-like diffused matte finish. As always, it comes with the little velvet pouch here. I keep all of them just to kind of help keep them protected when I'm traveling. I like that the new Tom Ford aesthetic includes the TF on the front, but otherwise the packaging is all the same. It also comes with a little brush. I don't use them, but I like having them for an option if I need it. I bought mine in the shade 01 Alabaster Nude. This is a Chikahoto brush. I cannot remember the number of it for the life of me. I'm sniffing everything just so I know if there's a scent or not. I smell something. It smells like, it smells like kind of perfume, but it's very faint. This brush is a natural fur brush. I'm just gonna use this to buff around the edges. I don't have any other, well, I actually did finish very softly with my foundation, some of the Anna Sui powder, but I didn't use a heavy layer of it because I knew I wanted to go in with this powder. I am dry skin, well mostly, mostly dry. Sometimes I have better days where my skin is very nice and it's more normal. So far, I like the finish of it. It's not taking away a whole lot of the luminosity from my foundation, but it has a soft, subtle matte finish to it and it's lovely. I did pull out the Hourglass powder. This one is the Vanish Airbrush Pressed Powder. This one here is, is kind of basic. So I bought this one during the Sephora sale in the spring. It's a little bit basic. I didn't feel like there was anything to stand out about this powder. It's beautiful. It doesn't make me feel dry. It doesn't suck out all of my natural moisture. 
it's okay. This one feels a little more diffused, a little more soft, a little more cashmere-like. When I think about a soft matte blurring powder, I want it to be a little more cashmere. This one has that luminosity to it, but not flat. Does that make sense? I hope I'm not rambling on so it doesn't make sense. It feels incredible on my skin. I feel an overwhelming compulsion to just keep rubbing it all over my face. Despite the fact that the brush is incredibly soft, it's the powder that just looks so stunning. Which it better, because for $95 with nine grams of product in here, it better. It better look like every dollar that I just dumped into this powder. I cannot wait to try this with the Tom Ford Architecture Soft Matte Foundation. And I really wanna give this a go with a couple other products like the new Dior Cream Stick Foundation. I wanna try it also with the Chanel Number no. 1 because that is my go-to creme de la creme foundation. And if this makes all of those favorite foundations look glorious, it will be my new holy grail powder. My eye makeup is finished. This is the Cleona Cosmetics Paleo Palette. This is in a separate video, so if you're interested in this one, keep your eyes peeled. I have just a little bit of shimmer fallout on my face, which is perfect because it gives me, gives me an excuse to pull out this again. I loved playing with it on my first impressions. I'm gonna do this one more time just to kind of sweep away a little bit of that shimmer. I am so happy with this. I am not super big on matte powders, but this is that perfect in between. It's matte, but it's diffused, it's airbrushed, it's soft, it's divine. I cannot say enough good things about this palette. My vocabulary is not as broad as I would like for it to be, especially not in this instance. I am so excited to keep playing with this. It's easily going to be one of my favorites for this year. I have so many powders. I'm gonna end up having to do a powder ranking. For normal to dry skin, you can use this powder. I am loving this. I cannot wait to see how it wears throughout the rest of my day, how it makes my skin feel, how my foundation wears with it. But as someone with more dry skin, this is insane. Overpriced? Yes. Everything makeup wise, $95 for powder. Yeah, it's overpriced. I paid for it. If it's worth it to you, yeah, maybe it's not overpriced. If it's not worth it to you, it definitely is. It's worth it to me and I still think it's overpriced. That being said, I'm so happy with it. I cannot wait to keep playing with this with some of my more favorite foundations. The Rabanne foundation, it's beautiful. It doesn't really remind me too much of my Fenty Beauty. Now that it has dried down, I have powdered a little bit. I didn't go crazy with the Tom Ford powder. I didn't even put a lot of my loose powder to set my makeup. I did a very light, gentle dusting of the Anna Sui powder just to kind of help it set. It didn't even need that. It set on its own as I was applying it, which is a great thing, especially if you're more oily. This is great. I don't think it's as close to the Fenty Beauty as I originally had thought. The description made me believe that it might be. However, even before I did a gentle powdering just to kind of set my foundation, it still looked a little more matte. A soft, luminous finish, but more matte. Whereas the Fenty Beauty is far more luminous and glowy and dewy and all that good juicy stuff. So if you were hoping it'd be more like this, it's not. The foundation shades, I think they need a little bit of work. I am not the lightest, fairest skin tone. 00C would have been the correct shade for me. I believe that one, let me compare this to the Christian Dior foundation, the stick foundation. I keep this one on my desk. I love this one so stinking much. It is absolutely incredible and worth every single penny. So this is the shade 0N, it's a neutral undertone. This is not the lightest of the Dior foundations, thankfully. Where did I put this foundation? There it is. There are lighter shades than this. This one from Rabanne, let me see if I can use this without wasting too much, is even just a touch darker than the Dior. Deeper than the Dior. Just a touch, not too much, but just a touch. It doesn't look like it's oxidizing on my arm. It doesn't look like it's oxidizing on my face. But in reality, I should have gotten 00C. So if you're my skin tone or even lighter, go down a shade unless you can just make this work. It's only been on my face for an hour. 
or at least I think it's been an hour. I don't even want to grab my phone. But otherwise, it's sitting beautifully. It doesn't look like it's emphasizing texture. It looks just a touch dry in my T-zone, which could be my problem for using too much of the Tom Ford powder. I was just getting carried away. I was having a good time. I was in the zone. Girl, I don't see it standing out over some of the more recent foundations that have launched. The Dior foundation has swept me off my feet. This has not swept me off my feet but it's beautiful. It is nine o'clock at night. I just put my son to bed. My eyes cannot tolerate the lights. The studio lights are just affecting my eyes in a way where I kind of just want to rub them furiously. And I'm trying not to tear up, but that's how I, my eyes are so sensitive. The foundation is wearing beautifully around my chin. I don't see much breaking up around my chin whatsoever. It doesn't even look super shiny and bright and oily. My nose looks incredible. After eight hours, because at nine o'clock now, I think I started applying it around one o'clock in this afternoon. The nose looks great. It's, it's not breaking up in a way that's making the point of my nose look noticeably bad. It just doesn't. It just looks really nice. It's wearing away smoothly. In fact, it doesn't even look like it is wearing away at the nine hour, eight hour mark. My smile lines look incredible, minus right here on the left side of my mouth. You can see a little bit of breaking up, but not too much, and even less so on the right side of my mouth. My forehead, my 11 C's, you can't even see them. My frown lines, they look stunning. I've been carrying my sun around on the left side of my face, so you might see some smudging on my left cheek, that is not from the foundation. That is actually just from his little baby head brushing against my face because the left side of, sorry, the right side of my face where he has not been brushing his head around is looking lovely. You don't see any smudging, none of it. My forehead looks beautiful and that's typically the one place where all of my foundations will break up. Overall, I would say for eight hours, this foundation has been one of the more beautiful, long-lasting foundations. Despite it not being very stand out in my collection or making a, a, a noticeable first impression, it looks beautiful. It does give me an option, or an opportunity rather, to pull out this bad boy again, the Tom Ford Architects Off Matte Powder, and reapply. I may be wearing my pajamas, but I'm not taking off my foundation just yet. Plus, I wanted to see how it would look powdering it up just a bit to kind of freshen up my makeup. It looks so beautiful with this powder. I am super obsessed with the powder. I hope that's not coming across obnoxious, but this powder is divine. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I truly appreciate you. Everything on my face is linked down below in the description box. So if you click on those links, I do earn a small commission. Thank you so very much for supporting my channel. I cannot begin to express to you how much I love your conversations in the chat. So I will meet you down there. Do something for yourself today because you are worth it.